And I want to thank you on behalf of all women, Martin, for always presenting women as strong, for always allowing us to speak our mind through the good times, through the bad times. He's always there. He always has an ear. And I just say, honey, if you want these people walking all over your name, fine. But I want to tell you, you are in the stars in the heavens forever for everything you've done. Lynn Whitfield has led a long and successful career in Hollywood. However, one of her most popular roles was when she starred in A Thin Line Between Love and Hate with Martin Lawrence as her co-star. Despite the success of the film, she has never worked with Lawrence again, and she recently revealed why. So, what exactly did she say? Born in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, Lynn Whitfield's roots run deep in the rich tapestry of the arts. Her parents, Jean and Dr. Valerian Smith, were integral figures in Baton Rouge's art scene, fueling Whitfield's early interest in acting. Her mother, a founding member of the Lynx Incorporated and an Alpha Kappa Alpha sorority member, played a crucial role in nurturing Lynn's passion for the arts. As the eldest of four children and a third-generation BFA graduate from Howard University, Whitfield's trajectory into the world of acting was inevitable. Her maternal grandmother, Estelle Duvall Butler, shared Lynn's love for movies, exposing her to the magical realm of cinema. By the tender age of five, Lynn had already made up her mind. She wanted to be part of the enchanting world of films. Embarking on her career, Whitfield made her mark on the stage, captivating audiences with the Black Repertory Company in Washington, D.C. After tying the knot with playwright-slash-director-slash-actor Van Tile Whitfield in 1974, she migrated to New York, gracing off-Broadway productions like The Great McDaddy and Showdown Time. Her international acclaim burgeoned with the 1977 production of For Colored Girls Who Have Considered <laughs> When the Rainbow Is Enough, touring the United States, Australia, and London's West End alongside Alfred Woodard. The 1980s witnessed Whitfield's professional screen debut in 1981, landing the role of Jill Thomas in the critically acclaimed NBC serial drama Hill Street Blues. As the years unfolded, she solidified her presence in the entertainment industry, featuring in films like Dr. Detroit in 1983, The Slugger's Wife, Silverado, and Jaws, The Revenge. Television films such as The George McKenna Story and Johnny Mae Gibson, FBI, showcased her versatility. In the 1990s, Lynn Whitfield's career soared to new heights. Her portrayal of Josephine Baker in The Josephine Baker Story in 1991 garnered widespread recognition, earning her a Primetime Emmy Award and a Golden Globe nomination. This success marked a turning point, leading to a recurring role in the ABC legal drama Equal Justice and various made-for-television movies. The pinnacle of the decade came in 1996 when Whitfield took on the female lead opposite Martin Lawrence in the dark romantic comedy A Thin Line Between Love and Hate. Despite the age difference, the film's success, grossing over $35 million against an $8 million budget, showcased Whitfield's enduring talent. The film starred Martin as Darnell Wright, a man who knows how to get exactly what he wants from women. In the film, Darnell Wright meets Brandy Webb, played by Lynn Whitfield. Danielle charms Brandy, and the two begin to date. However, after some time, he tries to end his relationship with her after realizing he's in love with his childhood sweetheart Mia, played by Regina King. Brandy doesn't take the breakup kindly and begins to make Darnell's life a living hell by beating herself up, blaming Darnell and destroying his car and property. Now, close to 25 years later, Lynn Whitfield opened up on TV One's Uncensored, where she spoke about how she prepared for her role playing opposite Martin Lawrence in A Thin Line Between Love and Hate. Many found Whitfield's performance to be too convincing and realistic. It turns out that some of the craziness of her character actually came from her personal life. For example, Whitfield's father, a dentist, told her about a patient who got her husband arrested after beating herself with oranges. The patient realized that when beating oneself with oranges, it doesn't hurt, but bruises can result. In an interview, she mentioned calling Martin, and they built on everything. In the two-minute preview, Whitfield also shared how Martin pushed her during filming to make the scenes more realistic. She knew they worked well together during the monologue. In the 2019 interview with Page Six, Whitfield spoke about her role as Brandy Webb, saying that a thin line between love and hate is now disposable entertainment but can be used repeatedly. She considers it an art that becomes a classic when it doesn't go away, staying relevant to humanity. People can always use it as a mirror to help themselves, and that's what she loves about the work.
Unfortunately, this film marked Martin's first and last time directing a feature film. Although Whitfield mentioned working well with Martin, they haven't collaborated again since. Despite this, Lynn did guest star in a 1997 episode of Martin, where she develops feelings for him. Amidst the onslaught of negative reviews and scathing remarks surrounding Martin Lawrence, it's a welcome change to discover that not everyone has a tale of woe with the actor-comedian. While the media buzzes with stories of Lawrence's alleged toxicity, it seems there's at least one individual who can vouch for positive experiences with him. It's a glimmer of hope in the midst of the drama and negativity that surrounds the star. For starters, Ernest Raj Thomas once reflected on the early days when Martin Lawrence first ventured into the entertainment world. He acknowledged that Lawrence received his initial break on What's Happening, a tidbit that hadn't widely circulated. He had just done uh, Star Search, but he didn't win. He didn't win Star Search. So his, his first professional gig was What's Happening. Okay. Now, yeah. Did you see the star power early on? I didn't see that. Okay. Thomas detailed how he graciously extended a warm welcome to Lawrence, even in the face of resistance from other cast members. He hinted at Lawrence's undeniable comedic talent, which inadvertently made Thomas's decision to support him almost effortless. During this period, Martin Lawrence was a budding star, brimming with potential. His magnetic charisma and undeniable talent quickly captured the attention of those around him, including Ernest Lee Thomas. The set of What's Happening Now was alight with camaraderie, and Lawrence's humor and vibrant energy injected a fresh vitality into the show. However, as Martin Lawrence's career soared to new heights, transformations became evident. Thomas craftily illustrated how Lawrence's demeanor underwent a noticeable shift. It was a transformation marked by a growing sense of arrogance and an ever-widening chasm from reality. This evolution became increasingly conspicuous as Lawrence ascended the ladder of fame and success. With each rung of the ladder he climbed, Lawrence ventured deeper into the realm of celebrity. The pressures of fame, the insatiable demands of the industry, and the allure of the spotlight appeared to have had a profound impact on his persona. The young artist who was once humble and driven was now showing signs of conceit and self-importance. Ernest couldn't resist sharing an intriguing anecdote about an unfortunate missed opportunity to collaborate with Martin Lawrence. He recounted how Lawrence regrettably declined a lucrative offer for a film project, leaving Thomas flabbergasted and disheartened. Ernest went further to explain the incident. And then we made the offer. We offered him $500,000 for 13 days. It ain't like you ever heard from the agent after that. Never heard from him. And that's all of it. Saying, another person who has called out Martin is Tisha Campbell. For context, before they became the iconic Martin and Gina on our screens, Martin Lawrence and Tisha Campbell were known as Bilal and Sydney when they both graced the 1990 comedic hit, House Party. A few years later, they teamed up again as Yvonne and Tyler in the Eddie Murphy-starred romantic comedy, Boomerang. During this time, Martin made a heartfelt promise to his close friend Tisha Campbell that if he ever landed his own show or another starring role, he would want her by his side, praising her impeccable comedic timing. The opportunity finally came when Martin's show Martin was given the green light, and a pilot was in the works. He wasted no time calling Tisha, thrilled about his upcoming show but disheartened because she had her own project in the pipeline, which had also been greenlit. Determined to persuade Tisha, Martin arranged a meeting at her place to discuss the prospect further. During this visit, he unexpectedly encountered Tashina Arnold, who was already friends with Tisha. Surprised by this connection, he invited Tashina to audition as well, and she accepted. Martin's mission to convince Tisha to leave her show was a success and the rest, as they say, is history. Martin went on to become a classic, leaving us with timeless quotes that still have us in stitches decades later. But, as is often the case, what we see on screen doesn't always reflect reality. While Martin and Gina's on-screen romance was the envy of many, behind the scenes, a different story was unfolding. On the surface, everything appeared fine. However, during the show's fifth and final season, viewers began to notice that Tisha Campbell was conspicuously absent from every episode alongside Martin. In fact, the only episode during that season where they were seen remotely close to each other was the series finale, where they interacted via a split-screen phone call. The show might have ended in May 1997, but filming had concluded months earlier, and reports emerged that Tisha had walked off the set and would never return. It wasn't until the show's demise in 1997 that fans began to wonder what had really transpired. To their shock, word on the street started to circulate, and a lawsuit alleging S harassment, battery, and AB was filed against Martin in 1997 by Tisha Campbell herself, 
making the details of their behind-the-scenes feud public. This revelation left many loyal fans upset and bewildered, craving answers. However, the full extent of the lawsuit remained somewhat obscure until now. Surprisingly, the allegations dated all the way back to the show's first season. The lawsuit claimed that during season one, Martin would persistently ask Tisha out on dates, to which she consistently declined. By season two, the lawsuit contended that Martin's behavior became increasingly erratic and volatile, characterized by unpredictable fits of rage without apparent cause and threats to fire staff and crew. In season three, Tisha alleged that Martin had subjected her to repeated instances of AB and humiliation, causing such immense stress that she had to be hospitalized. By season five, the lawsuit asserted that Martin's behavior had spiraled out of control. Despite Tisha's pleas to the show's writers not to script scenes where Gina and Martin shared a bed, they continued to do so. The suit also mentioned reports of Martin inappropriately touching and using his tongue during kiss scenes with Tisha against her wishes. The breaking point came when Martin had an explosive outburst directed at a cast member, leaving Tisha terrified for her safety. She then informed show producers that she would never return. Meanwhile, Reginald Ballard, known for his role as Brew Man on the series, shed light on the situation behind the scenes in a June 2019 interview with Vlad TV. Ballard revealed that Martin Lawrence and Tisha Campbell's relationship had deteriorated to the point where they couldn't even be on the Universal lot at the same time. Couldn't even be in the same room together. Right, that, right. That and, I, and I knew that. I knew that. Yeah, I knew that they couldn't be on it. They not only not in the same room. They couldn't even. I don't think they was. They couldn't even be on the lot at Universal. You know, if Martin was on Universal lot, she couldn't be there. It, this behind-the-scenes tension baffled many, including Ballard, who maintained minimal interactions with the cast and no personal relationships beyond filming. Amidst the swirling allegations, it's genuinely refreshing to note that Whitfield found genuine enjoyment while filming with Lawrence. Anyway, in 1997, she shared the screen with Danny Glover and Rosanna Arquette in the comedic feature Gone Fishin', took on a supporting role in the Canadian drama The Planet of Junior Brown, and portrayed the mother of Journey Smollett's character in the critically acclaimed indie drama Eve's Bayou. Moving into 1998, Whitfield played a supporting role as an oncologist in the comedy drama film Stepmom. Entering the 2000s and beyond, Whitfield secured numerous supporting roles both on television and in films. She featured in the Chris Rock comedy Head of State and Tyler Perry's Medea's Family Reunion. Her appearances extended to The Women, The Rebound, Mama, I Wanna Sing, and various roles in low-profile B-movies. Additionally, Whitfield starred as Dorothea Garibaldi in the Disney Channel films The Cheetah Girls and The Cheetah Girls 2. On the small screen, Whitfield had recurring roles on Boston Public and Without a Trace in the 2000s. From 2014 to 2015, she graced the ABC legal drama How to Get Away with Murder as the villainous Mary Walker. Whitfield also had a recurring role on Hit the Floor and played the abusive mother of April, Rochelle Eights, on Mistresses. In 2015, Whitfield landed a significant role as the main antagonist in Greenleaf, an Oprah Winfrey Network original scripted drama series. She portrayed Lady May Greenleaf, the imperious minister's wife and the power and money-hungry matriarch of the Greenleaf family. The series received positive reviews from critics, and Whitfield's performance was lauded, earning her several awards, including the NAACP Image Award and the Gracie Award. The show concluded in 2020 after five seasons, and Whitfield was subsequently cast in a leading role in the planned spin-off. 2018 saw Whitfield co-starring with Sanaa Lathan in the romantic comedy film Napoli Ever After. She also made a guest appearance on the Fox medical drama The Resident in 2019, portraying Seanette Renee Wilson's mother, a renowned Nigerian surgeon. In 2021, she co-starred in the comedy film Vacation Friends. And in 2023, Whitfield is set to appear alongside Nicolas Cage and Ron Perlman in the action comedy film The Retirement Plan. In any case, the talented star has always glorified the silver screen with her unremarkable talent. However, she has gone through struggles that many people overlook because of the glitz and glamour of Hollywood. It seems that her marriages are anything but perfect, and she has revealed that she has suffered in her life because of it. Every marriage faces challenges, and despite being married twice, Lynn Whitfield couldn't salvage either of her relationships ultimately ending in divorce. She tied the knot at the age of 21 with a man 23 years her senior, Vantile Whitfield, who was a trailblazer in black theater as a playwright, director, and actor. 
Lynn Whitfield and her first husband, Van Teel, separated in 1978, four years after their wedding. They did not have any children together, and sadly, Van Tile passed away in 2009 due to Alzheimer's disease. In 1990, Lynn Whitfield entered her second marriage with Brian Gibson. Unfortunately, similar to her first marriage, her second union ended in divorce in 1992. Brian Gibson, her second husband, was a film and TV director. Due to various ups and downs, they ended up in a divorce in 1992. Lynn Whitfield and Brian Gibson share a daughter named Grace Gibson, who is 26 years old and often makes appearances alongside her mother. However, her divorce didn't make her weaker but strengthened her relationship with God. She said, When I went through a terrible divorce is when I really discovered my relationship, you know, a spiritual relationship with God. There have been times in my life where I knew that I couldn't make it without God. In an interview when discussing interracial relationships, Whitfield was asked if she faced any backlash when she married her second husband, director Brian Gibson, in 1990. Despite the short-lived nature of their marriage, ending in divorce in 1992, Whitfield acknowledged that some people objected to her falling in love with the white man who directed her in the HBO television film, The Josephine Baker Story, emphasizing that she maintained professional boundaries and wasn't intimate with Gibson while working together because she, quote unquote, couldn't give up my power. Whitfield posed a question to any black man who disapproved of her interracial marriage. Where were you to step in and make me an offer I couldn't refuse? In any case, in stark contrast to the tumultuous lives of many celebrities, Lynn Whitfield has carved out a serene existence, marked by a remarkable absence of drama and minimal clashes with fellow actors in the industry. Such tranquility is increasingly uncommon in today's celebrity landscape, making Whitfield's poised and drama-free trajectory all the more exceptional. Anyway, that's it for this video, folks. Bye.